<laughs> I turned Peg off. That's right. That's right. So, well, good evening, guys. I'm glad you all um, have logged on so we can talk about another uh, Bible passage. Um, we're gathering on these Wednesday nights to talk about uh, anxiety, and we're looking at certain passages um, through those lenses to see um, just what um, truth that we can discover um, through these passages. So why don't we uh, begin with prayer? Let's pray. O oh Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit, open our hearts and our minds that as scripture is read and meditated upon this night, we may hear with joy what you wish to say to us. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Okay, so if you, uh, if you joined us last week, you know I um, started um, with two questions and they were very, very difficult questions. Um, but uh, a couple of you yes. uh, talked to me afterwards and talked about how you continued to meditate on those questions and uh, something good came out of it. So I was happy to hear that. But um, tonight's opening question is much easier, I think. Um, the question is, name something that is happening in the world right now that is causing mm -hmm. you anxiety. So name something that's happening in the world right now that is causing you anxiety. Okay, Susan. Illnesses. <laughs> illnesses. Okay. Okay. I didn't say this, this COVID word. I just said illnesses. Okay. Yes, Chip. Future elections. Future elections. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Really sick of those. Yes. Um, For sure. I am. Um, I, I kid you not, I probably got um, five or six. Um, text today, you know, from different campaigns, and I got about four or five calls wanting to know how I was going to vote. So, I mean, I think just, and this is, you know, well, this will be happening, you know, for the next, what, three or four weeks still. So it, it does get old, that's for sure. Okay. So what else is happening in the world right now that is causing you anxiety? Yes, Jim. The education of my great grandkids. I'm really concerned about that. Yes. Yes, um, and rightly so. If, uh, if you have no kids in the um, school system right now, you may not know what's going on, but the um, online um, education is failing miserably. Um, the, um, yeah. We got a, a note from the um, high school principal last week, and she said that um, for those um, kids, a lot of kids at school, um, or having lots of problems. It was like over 60% of kids that were failing at least one subject. Um, she said it's very concerning. And she said that when we start talking about the online uh, learners, she said that doubles um, for oh the amount God. of classes yeah. that they are failing. Um, yeah. This is why you're hearing a lot of the um, local school district. Well, I noticed that the Whitesboro School District, they are um, closing up all online learning uh, beginning with the new uh, term and they're just gonna do all um, and S is next week. Okay. So. And how? Yesterday, I think. Who did oh you say, God. Carol? Who who was yesterday? S and S, how and oh. Whitesboro are all going in person only. So yes, that's a that's a definitely a concern, and you can imagine, um, you know, the anxiety that the the families are feeling and the kids mm -hmm. are feeling. Um, you know, some uh, kids are capable of the work, but they just that kind of learning you know, having to do it themselves. It's a lot of self-starting kind of things. Um, they're just not able to do yet. So you can imagine the anxiety that they're under. So mm. definitely a, a prayer concern for us. So Amen. anyone else? Well, I worry about bringing something to mom. Okay, yes. Um, I mean, I'm doing everything I can not to, but you still have that in the back of your mind. And Billy yes. too. Yes. She especially. Mm -hmm. Yes, so um, we're going to look at uh, Psalm 73 tonight. Um, and I just took, I made a summary of the uh, study guide, so I'm just going to read this first part. It says, Psalm 73 gives us a close look at someone dealing with anxiety in response to what is happening in the world around him. From his perspective, arrogance and wickedness are on the loose and he is fed up with it. 
I mean, we can definitely relate to that, right? Uh, anxiety yeah. has a way of getting our focus out of whack. So refocusing our thoughts on the goodness of God helps us reset our minds, which ultimately reduces our anxiety. So this is kind of summary statement of, of Psalm 73. So, so Psalm 73, it's a longer Psalm. I'm going to read the whole thing in just a minute. Um, but it, it allows us to experience uh, this psalmist journey from anxiety um, to he's very anxious and he ends up being very at peace with uh, the situation. Uh, so we're going to just uh, journey with him and see um, what truths we can uh, discover together. So here, let me share this screen. And as I've uh, been doing before, <laughs> hold up, I got to close these. Yeah, there we go. Um, I'm going to read uh, the whole um, the whole psalm, and then I'll just um, provide some moments <laughs> of meditation, personal meditation, and then we'll um, look at it together. So this is Psalm yes. 73. You want to sit together so you can see this? Truly God is good to Israel, to those here. whose hearts are pure. But as for me, I almost lost my footing. My feet were slipping and I was almost gone. For I envied the proud when I saw them prosper despite their wickedness. They seem to live such painless lives. Their bodies are so healthy and strong. They don't have troubles like other people. They're not plagued with problems like everyone else. They wear pride like a jeweled necklace and clothe themselves with cruelty. These fat cats have everything their hearts could ever wish for. They scoff and speak only evil. In their pride, they seek to crush others. They boast against their, the very heavens and their words strut throughout the earth. And so the people are dismayed and confused, drinking in all their words. What does God know, they ask? Does the Most High even know what's happening? Look at these wicked people enjoying a life of ease while their riches multiply. Did I keep my heart pure for nothing? Did I keep myself innocent for no reason? I get nothing but trouble all day long. Every morning brings me pain. If I had really spoken this way to <clears throat> others, I would have been a traitor to your people. So I tried to understand why the wicked prosper, but what a difficult task it is. Then I went into your sanctuary, O God, and I finally understood the destiny of the wicked. Truly, you put them on a slippery path and send them sliding over the cliff to destruction. In an instant, they are destroyed, completely swept away by terrors. When you arise, O Lord, you will laugh at their silly ideas as a person laughs at dreams in the morning. Then I realized that my heart was bitter and I was torn all up inside. I was so foolish and ignorant. I must have seemed like a senseless animal to you. Yet I still belong to you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, leading me to a glorious destiny. Whom have I in heaven but you? I desire you more than anything on earth. My health may fail and my spirit may grow weak, but God remains the strength of my heart. He is mine forever. Those who desert him will perish, for you destroy those who abandon you. But as for me, how good it is to be near God. I have made the sovereign Lord my shelter and I will tell everyone about the wonderful things you do. So I will just give you a, a moment or two to think about these words um, silently, and then we'll look at them together. Always carefully. Always carefully and I sit in dancing in the street. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Okay, so um, before I take this away, I just want to um, just look at the first two um, scriptures, uh, the first two verses here. Um, you know, the, the first thing I want to bring to our attention is um, how does the psalmist portray God? Uh, notice in verse one, it says, 
truly God is good to Israel, to those whose hearts are pure. So he starts off by uh, declaring that God is good. Um, and this is why he's so confused and um, why um, all of this bad stuff is happening, why life seems so unfair. If God is good, um, then why is all of this stuff happening? And then notice in verse two, um, you know, the question is, why does the psalmist portray, or how does the psalmist portray himself in verse two? He says, but as for me, I almost lost my footing. My feet were slipping and I was almost gone. So he's talking about how he lost his footing. You know, he almost succumbed to all of his anxious thoughts, his um, questioning thoughts. Um, so despite knowing God is good, um, you know, he almost lost his footing. Um, so the question becomes, why is the psalmist, um, you know, why is his life so full of anxiety? Well, this comes in verses three through five, and I'll read these and we can talk about them. It says, for I envied the proud when I saw them prosper despite their wickedness. They seem to live such painless lives. Their bodies are so healthy and strong. They don't have troubles like other people. They're not plagued with problems like everyone else. Um, so what do you think, uh, or what do you hear in those words, why um, the psalmist is having so much anxiety by what's going on around him? What's, what's going on in his world? He's comparing. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, Lois. <laughs> He's comparing his life and their lives, which that never works. Okay. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, Carol. Sounds like he's making a lot of assumptions, too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's asking, you know, he says, my enemies are so arrogant and wicked and their lives seem so carefree and they're, you know, becoming rich. Uh, all the while, um, the righteous are suffering. These are, I think, all questions um, that we have asked. Um, you know, he, he simply declares, you know, this is unfair, Lord. Uh, you know, that you can hear the bitterness um, in his words. Um, and you can almost sense that he's just tempted to give it all up and just to join him, right? If, if I'm doing everything right and I'm, I'm, you know, nothing is working in my life and they're living however they want to and, you know, they're getting nothing but goodness, then, you know, why would I keep this up? Um, there's a sense of, of envying them and a sense of just hopelessness uh, that's um, coming into his heart. Yes, Jim. Yeah, it, it, to me, it sounds like he's saying, I really want what they have. And I'm really jealous that I don't have it. Yes. Um, well, yes, Marcia. But haven't I mean? Haven't we all felt that way at some point in our life? Oh, sure. More than once. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, Carol. Well, I guess in a way, I I don't know that he's feeling entitled, but it's almost like I've earned better grace than they have, and that's not what it's all about. We are on the same plane that they are. Um, we shouldn't get anything better than they do because he loves all of us equally. So it's, that's that circle that you keep going around and around in your head that, yeah, I, I'm trying, but I'm not any better than anybody else. So you just keep thinking about it. Yes, yes. Which causes anxiety, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that it does. Linda, did you have your hand up? Yes, Linda. <laughs> um, I think maybe a lot of people including here, sometimes see the grass is greener on the other side, but that's because they're not eating the grass. If they <laughs> ate it, they'd find out it was no better. You know, that they had problems too. There were some weeds mixed in. Yes, yes. <clears throat> yes, Marsha. No, my, I was just... Oh, oh no. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you've heard the saying that the, you know, the grass, your neighbor's grass, you know, the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence, but it's just because they water it more, which means they have a higher water bill than you do. So, um, you know, there's, there's no easy answers. Um, it's interesting to me, let's, let's go on um, to verse um, seven here. Um, you know, how many of us, um, you know, have said something like this? It says, these fat cats have everything their hearts could ever wish for. Um, and, you know, we have to be very careful because often our perception of other people's lives is, is not the full story. I always liken this to uh, Facebook posts. Um, you know, very few people will ever post anything on their Facebook that is bad at all. You know, they'll only 
um, post all of the good stuff, you know, the glorious vacations and when their kids are, you know, on their best behavior, when they're on the honor roll and you're thinking, you know, why, why can't my life be that good? Mm -hmm. Well, their life is not that good because they're only posting the good stuff. Um, and each of our lives have good stuff and bad stuff. So, you know, we always say, well, why, you know, why is my life so awful and theirs is just perfect? Well, it's not. So we can always say, you know, I wish I had it easy like them, but um, in fact, their, their lives is not easy. Um, I've said this many times before. Uh, it's one of my life mantras is that everyone is fighting a battle that um, no one knows about. Um, that, you know, we could, I could ask tonight, you know, what battles are you facing? And we could all share battles that none of us knew um, we were even uh, uh, facing right now. So, um, you know, no one's life um, is perfect. Um, just um, a couple days ago, I read a story about a person who won $5 million in, the, in one of the lotto scratch-offs. Um, and it's so easy to say, um, you know, who wouldn't want to win $5 million, right? I mean, but the problem is, <laughs> the problem <laughs> is, is the, uh, their life uh, just took this downward spiral because they were part of a very large family and um, all of the family just um, started demanding, you know, if you have all this money and I'm struggling, um, it created all kinds of problems and it created all kinds, she ended up losing her husband over this. Um, so, you know, you talk about, you know, what's, who wouldn't want to win $5 million? Well, when you find out what it does to people, um, you know, all of her, her extended family, it's not talking to her, she lost her husband just over, you know, this $5 million lotto. So, um, wow. You know, it's, it, there's always more to the story. So you could, you know, we can say these fat cats have everything their hearts wish for. Well, sometimes um, that life we don't want either. So any comments? I think, I think. Yes, Lois. <laughs> I think whoever wins that should just get all cash and go out in the middle of a, a courtyard somewhere and tell them to come on and then just throw it around and see what happens. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Just call it a scramble. <laughs> yes. Yes. Wow. Yes, That's Laura. So I caught myself saying to my husband just, you know, yesterday, today, whatever, about that, you know, it that like Trump got all this money and all this great medical care right at his fingertips and everything. And I kept relating it to money, but then we have today, you know, we lost a great artist yesterday. Uh, great to me because my age, but Eddie Van Halen. And he had money. And he had, you know, it, access to medical care and things like that. But he still died of cancer. Like all his money, everything he had, even having, you know, a son that loved him and family support, it, it didn't save him. You know, it didn't stop what was going to happen just because he had all that. Right. So sometimes just because you have the means, you know, people think you have a lot of stuff. It, it doesn't save you from some of the bad things that can happen. Mm hmm True. Yes. Um, and I think it's very important at this point in the psalm to, to recognize that no, no one um, has a perfect life, um, that, you know, on our own, um, we're all going to struggle, you know. So the question becomes is, you know, where is our hope? You know, where is God in the midst of this? Where is God when we're, you know, don't even believe in God and, you know, everything is great um, until it's not? You know, or where is it, you know, for people of faith when we do everything right and we still struggle, you know, where um, it seems like, you know, there's no hope whatsoever. So just just hold on to that. So so let's go back um, to this text. Um, if you're following along where um, I'm going to look at verses 13 through 16. Um, I have to go to two different slides to do this, but um, so at this point, the psalmist does not hold back his feelings. You know, we can kind of get an idea of what he's going through. So um, starting in verse 13, it says, Did I keep my heart pure for nothing? Did I keep myself innocent for no reason? I get nothing but trouble all day long. Every morning brings me pain. If I had really spoken this way to others, I would have been a traitor to your people. 
So I tried to understand why the wicked prosper, but what a difficult task it is. Um, so, you know, the, the psalmist here, um, he's just bringing his heart, his true heart to God. He's saying, you know, why, um, why did I play by the rules? You know, it's brought me nothing. Um, you know, he said, I did everything right. And yet all I experience is suffering. Um, so why, why bother? You know, you can just hear the doubts um, forming in his heart. Um, you know, is faith worth it? How many of us have asked that question before? Um, you know, he's, he's to this point and says, you know, is, is faith really worth it? So um, when we're looking at this text through um, the lenses of anxiety, what I want to bring out here is that inner conflict, whatever that is, um, for the psalmist, it's, um, you know, why do the, um, the people who um, have no faith, why do they prosper and while I don't? That's his inner conflict. But whatever inner conflict uh, that we're dealing with, it always is very highly um, anxiety inducing. So we have to figure out how to break out of that, um, you know, when we're doing this inner conflict. Um, so in a lot of times when we uh, continue to talk to ourselves, it doesn't help. So we have to figure out, you know, how to, it's like that endless loop um, and we just can't get out of it. So, so do any of you fight that, that inner conflict that just over and over, um, you know, can't get out of your head kind of thing? Um, and what is that like and how do you get out of it? Let's, let's just stop there and ask that question. Would anyone like to share? Yes, Marcia. <clears throat> well, I think everybody in their lifetime has good times and bad times. And, you know, you can, you can just be skating along and everything's just wonderful. And then you have a life event that throws everything off the tracks and life isn't so good anymore. Mm -hmm. But I think that's just life. Yes. Yes. And, oh yes, go ahead, Carol. I was just gonna say, a lot of times mine is situations that I can't control. And so I worry about what I can do to fix it or whatever. And um, really the only way I can get out of it is either the situation resolves itself or I finally give up and say, okay, God, I'm done. It's your turn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then truly let go. Yes. But that, that's very hard to do for me because I'm used to <laughs> fixing things and being in charge of my own decisions and stuff. And sometimes you can't be. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Yes, Jim. Yeah, well, I, I agree with Carol. With me, it's, you know, when I don't give it to God, then I feel like a gerbil in one of those spinning wheels, and you just keep <laughs> running and running and running, and oh, you get okay. nowhere. And then finally, you just say, oh, I, I can't do this anymore. Yes, yes. It's, you know, as we talked about in a previous Bible study, I, you know, that's wasted energy. Um, you know, the more we worry, it just, it just wasted energy because it solves nothing. Uh, and just think of all that energy that you could be using on something that's much more productive. Um, you know, we talked about um, connecting with God and then using that energy to serve others. And as we find a way to serve others, it gets us out of our own um, kind of funk. Um, so, you know, it um, sometimes um, people... Um, you know, we, we get kind of in our own funk and kind of start feeling sorry for ourselves. And then we enter into other people's lives and realize that we have it much better than, than other people do. Um, True. So, um, you know, we had a um, one time a person came in um, with the helping for the helping ants fund needing uh, help with rent and they were kind of embarrassed where they lived. Um, I believe it was a housing authority. Um, and um, the problem was, uh, or the interesting thing was to me was that uh, very day we had, we, a homeless person came in and it was about to get very cold. And so um, Kathy went to a Walmart and got them a tent uh, so that they wouldn't have to sleep out in the elements. So, you know, we had one person that was living in a tent and yet the other person had a room over their heads uh, and they were feeling guilty where they lived. So, you know, it's all about um, perspective and about giving thanks to God for whatever we have. Um, rather than what we don't have. So, mm -hmm. um, yes, Dwayne. Oh, you have to unmute yourself. Here we go. Hold up. Let me. I, I have that problem all the time with ramps because everybody right now wants a ramp within 30 days. 
and I've got a 28 <laughs> ramp backlog all the way to June that I'm trying to work out and trying to find crews to help me. I can build three a month normally that are under 20 foot, but anything over that, I'm constantly having problems. They're constantly calling me and says, have you got a date? Have you got a date? I just, I will call you when I have a date and a crew. And some people don't understand that. Some of the agencies don't understand that. And our CEO has already said, we'll only get 40% of our ramps built that we have referrals for this year. Mm -hmm. And I've already got 50 out of my 80 built this year. Yeah, that's awesome, Dwayne. Okay, so let's keep going. So something, um, um, something happens, we can uh, figure this out together. You know, something shifts within the heart of this uh, psalmist. Uh, so I'm going to read verses 17 through 22, um, and then we can talk about it. So, then I went into your sanctuary, O God, and I finally understood the destiny of the wicked. Truly, you put them on a slippery slope and send them sliding over the cliff to destruction. In an instant, they are destroyed, completely swept away by terrors. When you arise, O oh Lord, you will laugh at their silly ideas as a person laughs at dreams in the morning. Then I realized that my heart was bitter and I was all torn up inside. I was so foolish and ignorant, I must have seen like a, seemed like a senseless animal to you. Um, so what, what has changed um, within uh, this story? What did you pick up? Yes, Jim. I think he found God's grace. Yes, yes. So, you know, it begins by saying, I entered into the presence of God. So he reconnected with God. Um, I would argue that God got a hold of him. Um, you know, it's like the parent doing this kind of thing. Um, you know, let, let's have a talk here kind of thing. Um, and, you know, we might say that the light finally, you know, broke through, you know, his, the darkness of his own heart. Um, you know, he gained kind of a, a different perspective. Um, and what does God uh, tell him? Um, you know, this is always, why does the wicked prosper? Um, did you pick up why or what God told him about um, how he handles the wicked? Yes, Lois. Well, uh, he said that he finally also, he said that he, he then understood the final destiny. So that was a real wake up call, I think. Um, that's, after all, that is the end. Yes, yeah. So um, God pretty much tells him, I will deal with the wicked, uh, but it's probably not going to be on your timetable kind of thing. Um, and um, he says, you know, kind of that we're in the middle of the story. We're not at the end of the story yet. Um, you're thinking, you know, this is the way it's going to be. Uh, and yet I have a, a plan. Um, Paul tells us um, in his writings that God is patient um, with the wicked because um, God hopes that they will come to repentance. Uh, so instead of saying, God, you know, these people are so wicked, you just need to, to deal with them now. I just can't handle this anymore. Um, God would say, well, we need to step back because if I continue to be patient, just as I am patient with you, uh, then there's always hope for uh, repentance. There's always hope for salvation. Um, and that's, that's the grace part in this, right? That um, God, yes, uh, there will be a, a final judgment, but God is not in any hurry to do that because uh, God wants all people to experience salvation. Did I see a hand? Nope, okay. So, and he pretty much tells him that, you know, the wicked who put the trust in themselves or in the things of this world will be left with nothing. You know, it's just gonna be, um, you know, God pretty much laughs at them like we wake up. It says, you know, like we wake up with silly dreams. Um, we wake up and we're kind of startled. And then we realize it's just a dream. And we kind of laugh at ourselves kind of thing. Um, this is the analogy that uh, God uses with the psalmist, that this is the way it's going to be, um, that ultimately they will uh, find out the silliness of their, their ways. So, um, so this, um, this whole judgment gave this psalmist kind of a bitter spirit, and that bitter spirit brought anxiety because, um, you know, he's wondering why God is not dealing with this kind of thing. Yes, Jim. Yeah, I was just thinking that uh, a couple of weeks ago on our Tuesday session that we have, 
I think I mentioned uh, hearing a, a pastor uh, give the quote that hopelessness is the doorway to hope. And I think that's what he found. He found the doorway that led him to God's grace. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So then when he has this change of heart, um, he begins to forgive himself. And this is marvelous. Let's look um, at verses 23 and 24. Um, the psalmist says, yet I still belong to you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, leading me to a glorious destiny. Um, so, you know, he, he realizes that even when uh, he had kind of lost his way, um, you know, he recognizes that he still belongs to God and you hold uh, my right hand. Um, you know, that's, the, that's the, the grace part here, right? That God is leading us. Um, and our job um, is always to keep our hands in God. God is always reaching out to us. I always think of, you know, we did the, um, the first session we did, uh, Jesus with Peter, you know, um, uh, walking on the water. You know, mm -hmm. Jesus is always reaching out to us. Um, you know, our goal our, is to always um, just to, you know, keep our hands in God's because we know God's hand um, is always there. Yes, Marcia. And I'm, I know from time to time in um, sermons and when we've had discussions, you always say God comes down. Yes. So I think about God being up and reaching his hand down to us, but we have to be willing to reach our hand up and take his. Yes, yes. Um, so, you know, we do this, we keep our hands in God's through things like, um, you know, through prayer, um, through worship, through fellowship with other believers, um, like, you know, we're doing tonight, um, you know, just to keep our, our thoughts on the, the ways of God, I think, keeps us connected with God. And that would be using the analogy of our hand in God's hand. So, um, and even when life does not make sense, for the psalmist, it was, you know, why are the wicked prospering? But whatever in your life right now is just not making sense. God says, you know, don't give up. Um, let's just continue to journey together. Um, continue to trust that I have a plan. Continue to know that um, I have good things in store for you. Um, and this is the invitation that he offers to the psalmist. And I think that's the invitation that he um, offers to us as well. So even when life is filled with anxiety, when we don't know what's going to happen next, um, you know, God says, let's, let's just keep uh, journeying together um, and see what happens. Um, I think about the intro to Mission Impossible when he says, I have a mission for you if you choose to, choose accept, to accept it. it. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, Pastor. Yes, Lois. I think, too, a really important thing is that once he woke up, he said that, um, he had a desire to witness to others, to tell others about God's grace, I guess. Um, I thought, you know, that's something I think probably we feel too. Uh, when you, it's like, oh, I found this good thing and I want others, I want to share it. Yes, yes. And um, to know, you know, psalmists, whoever they were, we always assume David wrote all these psalms, but we know that's not true. Um, these psalmists were leaders of their community. And so earlier in the text, you know, he questions, you know, if I would just start spewing all of this stuff within the community, it might uh, draw people away from, you know, believing and from trusting in God. If I just start spewing all of my doubts. Um, so it's an act of discernment for him um, that, you know, there's a time and a place to, to talk about these things. And so it's awesome to me how he goes to God first uh, to say, you know, these are the thoughts that I'm having, um, you know, help me through them. And then I think once uh, he gets right with, with God in that situation, then he can share that story. You know, this is where I was, um, but I went to God and this is the wisdom that God gave to me. Uh, and so maybe if you're experiencing the same thing, maybe these words can, can speak to you as well. Um, you know, it's much different than saying, well, you know, the, the wicked are just prospering. This world is just going to heck. So why would I even try anymore? You know, I'm just going to give up on God. That's a much different story than, you know, I had these doubts. I went to God and he gave me these words of wisdom. So, Well, and I think sometimes the mission that he gives us, we don't like. And so we fight against it instead yeah. of, you know, just saying, well, help me through it. Right, 
right. Um, so let's keep going. Um, verses 24 through 26, and see if you can figure out what's going here, going on here. So it says, you guide me with your counsel, leading me to a glorious destiny. Whom have I in heaven but you? I desire you more than anything on earth. My health may fail and my spirit may grow weak, but God remains the strength of my heart. He is mine forever. Um, so what's the message here? God yes. is the end all. <laughs> yes, 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 Jim. Yeah, I just think, you know, he gave it over to God. He said, you're the best, I, you know, it's all yours. Yes, yeah, yes, Carol. Nothing can separate us from God. Yeah, yeah, he comes to this awesome um, realization that um, no matter what I don't have in life, um, I have my relationship with God and that's enough. Um, you know, that God is enough uh, for him. So even when life doesn't make sense, when life doesn't play out the way I think it should, um, God is still on the throne. I am still God's child. And so it's going to be okay. Um, so the, uh, the story for uh, this coming Sunday is the golden calf. It's a marvelous story. Um, I think I could preach on that text for a couple weeks, but um, there in this moment, uh, you know, Moses, if you remember, Moses has gone up on Mount Sinai and he's gone for 40 days and they're getting very antsy. You know, they're asking, you know, what if Moses doesn't come back? What are we to do? You know, we're out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and so they make this golden, can they take matters into their own hands? It's the same story as we have tonight. Um, the, you know, life is not the way we thought it should be. And so we're going to take matters into our own hands. Um, and ultimately, uh, there's, a, there's a problem with that. Um, and, you know, we can play this out with the political. I, I hear people all the time, I'm going to preach on this on Sunday, say, telling me that, um, you know, if, if Trump doesn't win or Biden doesn't win, then this world is just going to, you know, it's everything just going to collapse. Um, and I keep telling, you know, in, in whom do we trust? You know, that's, that's the question we have to ask ourselves. Do we trust in the God who has led us out of Egypt, as we've been talking on Sunday mornings, you know, the God who has promised to never forsake us, or do we put our hope and our faith in elected government officials? And if we do that, um, the world is going to just, um, you know, erode uh, in front of our very eyes, because our hope is not in the, our new elected president, our hope is in God. That's, that's, that's our hope. And when we do that, then it's going to be okay because God um, is all powerful and God will not forsake us. It doesn't mean that everything's going to go our way. It doesn't mean that everything's going to be um, nice and easy for us. But we know that in the end, as he says, we're in the middle of the story, but in the end of the story, we know all will be well. Um, and you can take that to the bank, let me tell you. So, <laughs> By the way, we were impressed that Moses was at church Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, it's so funny. Um, um, you don't realize how long his beard is, so he puts his mask on, you know, and then you have this long beard underneath it. So. Well, we hadn't seen him since March, so it was like, uh, oh, wow, Yes. Well, most of us haven't seen him since March either. <laughs> yes. So. Yeah. And the funny thing is in the winter, he always um, grows out his beard, but he, you know, he normally trims it. So he just, he's letting it all hang out and good for him. So. <laughs> it was very appropriate for the text. Today. That's right. That's right. So, yes. <laughs> so then we have these final um, verses. <clears throat> And there's something interesting with these. I'll draw your attention to it. 27 and 28 says, those who desert him will perish for you destroy those who abandon you. But as for me, how good it is to be near God. I have made the sovereign Lord my shelter and I will tell him everyone, I will tell everyone about the wonderful things you do. Um, the interesting thing about this is notice these words in 28, but as for me, how good it is to be near God. God. Let's go back to the very first opening of this. Um, look at verse two here. Um, but as for me, I almost lost my footing, my feet were slipping, and I was almost gone. So he starts out with these words, but as for me, you know, I was a hopeless cause. I had no hope whatsoever. Um, and then he ends the psalm with the same words, but as for me, how good it is to be near God. You know, I have made the sovereign Lord uh, my shelter. So 
Um, you know, at the very beginning, he's all anxiety ridden, uh, but at the end, he's um, at total peace. And the difference is um, the focus. Um, at the very beginning, he puts his focus on himself, on the problems before him. Um, and at the end, he puts his focus on, as he says, the sovereign Lord, you know, the one who is in charge, um, so all will be well. Um, <laughs> It's interesting how the psalmist used the same words to recognize the, the transformation he has had. So, um, thoughts? <clears throat> Ron, do you have something to say? <laughs> you did. <laughs> uh, it's unusual. <laughs> We're waiting for the pearl I, of wisdom. I agree, Ron. Thank you for sharing. So, <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. well, that was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I can't contribute. So you're good. You're good. Yes, Chet. Poets, oh, happy birthday, Ron. Oh, oh. oh. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I really had a good birthday and I keep forgetting about it. <laughs> yes, it was a Monday, correct? Yes. Okay, Monday. Monday, yes. Well, happy belated birthday. That's great. Thank you. So. Dad's a Saturday. Ah. Is or will be? His is, his will be Saturday, the 11th. 39 again? That's 109 <laughs> again. <laughs> oh. Ron. Three times 39. <laughs> Ron, I thought you were 99. I'm <laughs> close. I'll tell you, we've had a lot of dinners brought to us, or their, her sons are cooking steak. Saturday? Saturday. Sunday. Oh, Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> That's How awesome. Was yeah. What was Michael's surgery? Brian. Uh, Brian. Brian. No, it was Michael, I think. Anyway, your son-in-law, your he had, he had it Friday. Uh, uh -huh. Michael Longorius was Friday. the first of October, and it, no, his surgery. Oh, his surgery. surgery. Oh, surgery. His, he had his yeah. surgery Friday. Yeah, and he's doing real good. Yeah, Is he good. Very good. Uh, I wanted to say to oh, Pastor Johnson's oh, wow. birthday is the twenty-first, and our grandson's is the twenty-first. Chad. It's oh, also good. the 21st of October. So, that's did you know that? Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, um, how, how old is your dad going to be, Carol? 91. 91. Okay. That's <laughs> awesome. We just had a big party for him last year. Yes, yeah. yes. I lose track yeah. of time. So, yes. I know. It doesn't seem like it's been a year ago. Uh uh. Yes. Sure doesn't. Well, that's great. So, well, let's close with prayer. Let's pray. O oh Lord, drive out of our hearts all bitterness towards others. We want none of that choking out the hope that we have within us, that you planted deep within us through the waters of holy baptism. When dealing with others, grow our capacity for patience and compassion, which will ultimately lessen our anxiety. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 So next week, uh, in case you don't have the uh, study guide, we're going to be looking at uh, Matthew 11, uh, 25 through 30. Uh, and it's the text. Um, it, it's going to be a much easier text. We're going back to one of the Gospels. Uh, but it's the text where Jesus says, come to me, you know, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Um, take my yoke upon you, and you will find rest within your soul. So what does that mean? Um, you know, and how can that um, help us deal with uh, the anxiety that we are dealing with? So that will be next week's text. Will you be resting? I will be resting. Yes. In fact, um, yeah, Jim Hughes will uh, lead you uh, next week. So, uh, so get plenty of rest. rest. Yes, get plenty of rest. Yes. And then we're glad you're going to be able to rest. Yes. So, yeah. Dan, when... did you hear that? <laughs> he will. No, I didn't. Jim's going to be here. I won't be here. The Black Pearl is talking to you, Jim. We, Thank you. We, I love you, too. We, we will be here. We'll lock him in a room. There you go. 
<laughs> there you go. Yes, uh, because all of the uh, coronavirus craziness, um, you know, I've taken off very little time. I've taken off a day or two here and there when I can uh, get it, uh, you know, get it in. So, but yes, I will be, uh, I will be here for part of the week uh, next week, but um, for most of the week, I will be um, just taking some Resting. time off. So, yes. Good. You deserve it. Thank uh, you. Yes. Thank you. So, yes. Yeah. Trying to keep my head above water. So, yeah. You've done very well. You've been a very good shepherd to us during this time. So well, thank you. And we, thank you. Most of us promise that we'll behave next week for Jim. Most of us. I hope so. It will be recorded, so I will have proof. Uh, All right. I'll, I'll, I'll know who to visit. I'll know who to visit when I get back from vacation. So, so y'all have a y'all have a blessed night. So thank y'all for being a part of this. Thank, thank you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. I, 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 I,